All right, guys, we are test riding the Suzuki 400 Supermoto. If you ask me, this is almost like the standard when it comes to Supermotos. Uh, DRZs uh, have been around for a very long time. One of the few bikes in the market that is still uh, carburetor, which to me is kind of baffles me. Maybe that's a way for them to keep costs down. But it's going to be a very tall bike. You're going to get 10.3 inches of ground clearance. You're going to get 17 wheels, 17 inch wheels in the front. Hold on, I'm trying to turn. Uh, nope. Nope. Watch, watch. You just shut it off. guys well that was that was kind of embarrassing i guess i uh don't know how to ride a drz 400 sm but anyways guys so this is basically what i think of the pinnacle of uh the supermoto uh class <laughs> i didn't know i had to press the clutch <laughs> yeah interesting so as you can see this is going to be just very very basic uh, display gauges so it's gonna basically go between trip uh, A and trip B you're gonna go uh, your time is gonna be at the top basically so it's basically you able to go through the trips you know adjust whatnot so but very basic display this is gonna be very basic this is gonna be the bike that you're gonna be a hooligan in uh, like I said earlier so it's gonna be a 398 cc uh, liquid cool uh, engine this is gonna be 17 inch in the front 17 inch in the, in the rear you get 10.3 inches of uh, clearance you have a 35.3 oh. you get 35.3 uh, seat high so for me i am 30 in you know 30 to 31 inches of uh, my inseam I have to say I almost tiptoe but the suspension is extremely soft so even at you know even having a 35.3 inch uh, ground uh, seat height you're able to see that I am still basically almost able to flat foot it left or right the tank is gonna be a little bit under uh, three gallons so Typically this type of bike is going to get you between you know, 50 to 60 feet range So even with your two gallons, you're still talking about that you're getting over, you know, 100 probably 15 130 miles uh, uh, Per fuel up. So I guess you can see very basic. You only have your neutral light You're gonna have your high beam. It's gonna let you know whether or not your bike is getting hot uh, This is gonna be basically what's gonna be your your You're just gonna be your clock there going to show you your turn center for left and right so and you press over here in the bottom in the middle the yellow one is going to go ahead and reset the whole thing as you saw earlier uh, it's going to give you uh, in order for you to start the bike you have to basically uh, hold the clutch and then go ahead and, and press over here to go ahead and turn it on it has to be out in order for the bike to be able to go, go ahead and engage that's a weird thing i mean at least for me uh, but that's just the way it is if you ask me it almost feels like it's like very cheaply made i'm not sure if it's just me or i'm just trying to be picky or not but it feels cheap i have to say the bike feels great uh, in terms of uh it's a very flickable bike this bike is going to be a little bit over 300 pounds and you definitely feel that right off the bat it's not going to have a lot of horsepower however It's not gonna have a lot of horsepower, as you know, having a you know 390 cc motor, but being so light, it's gonna give you. Uh, it's gonna be very, uh, very light, very flickable. So you can see this is gonna be very smooth. It's gonna be a five-speed transmission, which again, to me, almost makes no sense. Just because if you think about it, all your, all your other. Uh, Kind of uh, you know smaller dual sport bikes you know you have your honda with the 300 you have you know your kawasaki with the klx 300 as well and even the 650 class all those bikes are going to have a six speed uh let's not forget that yamaha wr 250r which i had one back in 2008 even that bike has a, a six speed uh 
six-speed transmission, not this one. Uh, this is going to be chain-driven, so again, uh, you know, every couple of hundred, maybe a thousand miles, you know, clean and, and lube it up, no issues. Uh, the tires are going to be tubeless tires, so that's something that you're going to have to keep in mind if you're, you know, riding this type of bike. I know a lot of people, when they buy this bike, they, one of the things they do is that they buy uh, the, you know, dirt wheels, that way you're able to have your supermoto wheels and you have your dirt wheels all it takes you maybe an hour to swap wheels between your supermoto and your dirt wheels and you're you know able to go ahead and take it off road i know that they, they, they do sell kind of beefy tires for these supermoto wheels but they don't ride the same uh, i don't know if you're able to see earlier the supermoto wheel is going to be a wider stance versus, versus your typical uh you know dirt wheel that is going to have uh, it's going to be narrow and it's going to have like the knobbies you know for better traction and whatnot so so that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, the suspension is very, very spongy. Uh, I am 5'10 and I'm around 220. So obviously the weight doesn't help. But so something to keep in mind, if you get a bike, uh, if you get the DRZ 400 SM, you're gonna have to probably, you know, rework the suspension. Say that single disc in the front and the one in the back it does a great job at stopping the bike so uh, not you know not something that you have to worry about then again this is a 400 cc bike so not something that you you know you're not gonna need all that you know huge stopping power with ABS that the Hayabusa or the Vistrom 1000 have so I know a lot of riders take these bikes around the world I would love one of these bikes if especially here in Florida it's so sandy something like the 300 Honda or perhaps something like this one uh, it will do really good off-road especially in all the sand that we have here and we have a lot of deep sand so it will do really good so if you ask me what I like about the bike so far you get a, uh, over 10 inches of clearance that's gonna be right there like almost top of the class when it comes to ground clearance uh, in the front uh, you have a single disc it's gonna be a very nice single disc you get four piston calipers uh, in the back you are getting a single disc uh, the mirrors are serviceable at best. Uh, they are they look just very cheaply made uh, so So I don't like about that, but usually if you're gonna be going off-road you would definitely buy uh, the ones that are gonna be collapsible So it makes it you know if you end up falling or anything They're not gonna go ahead and break from your stem over here Typically the speed of this bike is gonna be like low uh, 90s again. This bike is not made to you know be flying This is a bike that is basically made for you to you know go from point a to point b have a lot of fun doing it if you want to go off-road you're able to go ahead and take this off-road if you want to uh, take this to work you're able to take it to work either swap the wheels or just leave them with your regular supermoto wheels uh, i have to say one thing i don't like is the fact that it's a carburetor we're in 2021 and it almost feels like at this point i mean especially for the price that you're paying for a bike you know for this type of bike you're talking about you're already you know close to eight thousand dollars the bike should have already uh it should have already uh you know fuel injection uh, i know if you're riding the bike a lot it's not an issue but if you happen to leave the motorcycle you know sitting for a while you might gum up the carburetor so i mean that might not be a good thing but uh that's probably the only down uh, one downside and my other one would be the fact that the suspension is so soft i like the way the exhaust sounds from the factory it sounds like very nice and riding this uh riding the suzuki 400 it reminds me of when i used to have my my wr 250 you're literally already you're almost the whole time in the rpm it's so light that you feel like you're going faster than you are and it's a lot of fun I know if you if you tune this bike uh, you know you put the exhaust you get a you tune the exhaust you know change the exhaust you put a map sensor uh, you're able to go ahead and get a little bit more horsepower, but I mean, my honest opinion, and quite, uh, if you ask me, this is a 400cc bike, this is not meant to be racing. Uh, so to me, I wouldn't even do that. I would just ride it as it is and just, you know, just take it for what it is. Uh, 
I keep forgetting that this is a five-speed bike and you find me constantly you know pressing the clutch and trying to shift into the next gear when I'm going at higher speed so the seat is just as I remember my WR250 beam it's hard as a 2x2 two two. so not not surprised it's a very narrow motorcycle so the seat is gonna be very narrow you might be able to buy like an aftermarket maybe like a Corbin or Sargent or one of those and you know you're gonna get better better cushion or you know more comfort but you know that's just me I never did anything to my WR I just rode it for what it was did some off-roading some light off-roading because I was still new to riding uh, never did highway cruising because I didn't feel like that was the bike for that so but a very fun little bike now keep in mind this has been let's just call it a dirt bike uh, you're not gonna get any you're not gonna get any wind protection so you know if you're buying this bike to be doing constantly uh, you know 55 60 miles an hour yeah As you can see, it can get up to speed. I mean, it's not going to be the Hayabusa <laughs> uh, speed, but it's going to get up to speed. So, as long as you remember to keep the gear in the right RPM range, which you can't see, you just you have to go by feel. You're going to notice that the bike is going to be very responsive. Now, if you're riding the motorcycle around, uh, the, you know, I would say like mid to low 40s in fifth gear you're gonna feel the bike uh kind of just like starting to lock down bug down but again it's expected you are riding this bike uh, in a high gear at very low speed so again if you keep the if you keep the bike at the right gear if you keep it at the right gear for the speed you're not gonna have any problem with it The, the lead guy is doing a pretty good job finding you know decent roads for Florida I mean I know it's hard when you're riding a bike you know test test riding a bike here in Florida to find anything decent to ride but he's found some decent rides in my other two demos that we've done so far so kudos to the guy for doing a good job So in order for me to be able to actually at least for me so far i've been enjoying the bike but i've been keeping it especially if i'm around 35 40 miles an hour up to like 55 60 i've been keeping it in fourth gear just to be able to stay in the power band and you can definitely feel the bike it feels you know peppies all right so they want us to turn right the guy the lead guy turned left so let me we're just gonna go ahead and pull here real quick we gotta wait We're waiting right now for the lead guy and the other bikes to come around so but i have to say i like the way they have these anonized bars it's going to be like like a it's a type of green i'm not sure what it is but it does it does uh bode very well with the bike because you're going to see you have the dark uh, tank you have your cowlings here to allow the air to go ahead and cool your you know to get into your uh, radiator and then you have the red seat over here with the Ask me at that point we went well, we, we could have just gone the other way and just call it a day i mean we're literally next to the dealer so <laughs> guys so if you enjoy the content just give it a thumbs up share like and subscribe uh subscribing is free so if you're enjoying the content you know just go ahead and subscribe to the channel that's a, pretty much the best way for you to help me grow the channel uh, 
let's see what else we can do this week or if I'm able to ride another bike so but again if you're enjoying the content just give it a thumbs up share like and subscribe you know do whatever you want uh, and I will see you guys next time